She's at a wedding, I think. She is. She went? I think she went uh, to a yeah, wedding. Her foster, her foster, his daughter got married at that wedding. Outside? Mm-hmm. Oh, outside the restaurant. Uh-oh. Well, she's married now. I think it's a quick story. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay, I call this meeting to order. At first, we'll have the invocation by Mr. Garber, and then we'll please uh, stand for that, and then we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance and the Texas Pledge. Thank you, Mayor. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for this new year. Uh, We ask you that you help us to live aware this year, listen to your words, and step out in faith and conviction during this upcoming election season uh, that is already upon us. And, Father, we pray all of that in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Okay, we have a proclamation here tonight. Um, This is always the fun part of the meeting, where we get to make a proclamation on some people who have done an outstanding job for the city of Corinth. Procurement Service Month. Whereas the public procurement profession plays a significant role in the efficiencies and the effectiveness of both government and business. And in addition to the purchase of goods and services, Procurement adds value to our organization by performing functions such as executing, implementing, and administering contracts, developing strategic procurement strategies, and cultivating working relationships with suppliers and other departments within the organization. And the purchasing division of the City of Corinth recognizes support and practices the public procurement values and guiding principles of accountability, ethics, impartiality, professionalism, service, and transparency established by the Institute for Public Procurement as fundamental tenets of the public procurement profession. And NIGP has proclaimed the month of March 2023 as Procurement Month to further expand the awareness of procurement professionals' role in governmental officials, the general public, business, and corporate leaders, and now, therefore, I, Bill Heideman, Mayor of the City of Corinth, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2023 as Procurement Service Month in the City of Corinth, Texas, and urge all citizens to join the City Council in recognizing the vital role our purchasing division performs in the daily operations of our city. Signed the 16th day of March 2023. I'd like to congratulate that, and I'd like Cindy Troyer. Juanita Ortez and Jody Wood, please come to the podium to get a picture taken and be recognized. And Mayor, I think Leanne Bunselmeyer, our finance director, has a couple comments about some uh, another recognition this group has achieved. So it's always great when you get to come up here and brag on your staff. And so as you're aware, our public works, our police department, and our fire department, they go through accreditation programs you know, every two to three years. Well, in the finance world, you have to go through that process on an annual basis. Last year, we were before you. Our purchasing staff won the um, Achievement of Excellence in Procurement for the first time ever. Uh, We were never able to meet all the criteria to apply for that position. Uh, This year, they applied. And each year, you have to show advancements and you have to show new initiatives that you've implemented within your department. And uh, these ladies won it for the second year in a row. So I thought this was a great opportunity to thank them for all their hard work. Um, They are a small, dynamic, mighty team, and they do a lot for the city. So I'd like to congratulate them with it.
I guess I, I saw it firsthanded uh, when we had our ice baguette, and um, when we were over in the um, public safety building and, and dealing with all the different things we were dealing with at that time. But to watch this purchasing and this procurement group work, I mean, they didn't miss a beat. These people were working, getting uh, diesel fuel, getting sand, getting all the different elements that they needed to get for the citizens of Corinth to function. And again, people don't realize the amount of work that they do in the back room, but we appreciate all that you do. Okay, citizens comments. Please, please limit your comments to three minutes. Comments about any of the council agenda items are appreciated by the council and may be taken into consideration at this time or during the agenda item. Council is prohibited from acting on or discussing items brought before them at this time. Do we have any citizens comments? Okay, consent agenda. I'd entertain a motion on the consent agenda. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve. I'll second. Is there any further discussion? Because we do not have any power here on our, our, our servers are down, what I'm going to ask you to do is all in favor say aye. 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 Same sign for anybody that opposes. It's unanimous. Business agenda. Hold a presentation, discuss, and take appropriate action to accept the annual external audit and the annual comprehensive financial report presented by Eddie Bailey, LLP. Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Tonight, our Director of Finance, Leanne Bunzelmeyer, will present this information and answer any questions that you have. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So tonight, the item before you is to accept our annual comprehensive financial report. Ide Bailey did perform an audit that concluded earlier, um, I guess last month, and they did issue an unmodified opinion. Uh, with that, I'd, I'm happy to say that we have grown most of our fund balances. Our general fund, we were able to increase about 800,000. We ended the year with 5.1 million. On water wastewater, we were able to increase it by a million dollars and ended the fund balance with about uh, 3.9 million. And then in storm drainage, we increased that by about 150,000, and they ended with a fund balance of 500,000. Now, these are our three major operating funds where we do have some uh, policy requirements that say that we have to meet a minimum requirement of 20 or 25 percent of our budgeted expenditures. So they all exceeded those overwhelmingly. So we did have a very strong financial season. Uh, before I turn this over to uh, Diane with Ide Bailey, I do want to recognize two of the accounting staff. Um, these ladies put in a lot of hours. Um, you know, we have a new controller that started with us in October of last year, and it's always difficult to do an audit, but it's even more difficult when your first day on the job is the first day that the audit starts, where you're trying to learn the systems and the processes and doing everything. And um, they, I, I, I'll tell you, I couldn't be more proud in this, uh, putting this CAFR together was all done by these two ladies. And so with that, I'd like to introduce Don Taylor, which he's our new controller that started in October. And then also Linda Toms, which is our accounting manager. And you may know Linda is, I consider her our utility player because she's been in accounting, she's been in purchasing, she can do it all. So, uh, but I'm very proud of them. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Diane. Good evening. It's my pleasure to be here tonight to uh, present the results of our audit. Um, we do appreciate the opportunity to perform your audit, and it's been a pleasure serving your center and especially working with your finance team. Um, <clears throat> again, I, uh, along with Leanne, I would like to also commend the finance department for their efforts in making the audit run very smoothly. Uh, we did not propose any audit adjustments as a result of our audit procedures, which demonstrates the excellent job that your finance uh, staff does. Um, for uh, the, the ACFR, the audit report. In our auditor's report, we do issue an unmodified opinion, as Leanne mentioned. That is the clean kind of opinion that you want to have on your financial statements. Um, in addition to the financial audit, we also had to perform this year what's called a single audit. Uh, due to the level of grant funding this year, the city was required to have a single audit, which is an audit of federal grant compliance. Uh, we audited, uh, y'all may refer to it as the ARPA, 
a grant, but it's the, uh, technically the Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Funds grant as a major program this year. And this uh, single audit report was issued separately from the ACFR, which I believe you probably have in your packet. Uh, we did not identify any deficiencies in your internal control over financial reporting, uh, nor did we identify any findings in our testing of grant compliance or compliance, uh, internal control over compliance. So the results of our opinions and the results of that single audit are in the separately issued single audit package. And then finally, uh, there are certain matters that auditors are required to communicate with those charged with governance. And so we issue those uh, communications in a written letter that's also, I believe, in your packet. Uh, it includes information such as uh, the financial statements do include certain estimates in your financial statements, uh, such as the net pension liability, allowance for accounts receivable, we do review those estimates and uh, the supporting documentation to support those. Uh, we had no difficulties in performing our audit. Um, and there was a new section, uh, new auditing standards this year required us to communicate significant risk identified in the audit. And this, uh, I just want to point out that these have always been identified as a risk in the audit, as audit is pretty much based on uh, various risks and identifying those and we tailor our audit procedures to address those risks. Um, we just never had to formally communicate with those uh, those risks with you before um, and I want to point out that professional standards presume that every audit has a risk of uh, for example management override of controls and improper revenue recognition so those risks are not isolated to your audit uh, but they're identified essentially for every audit. So sometimes people are alarmed when they see that uh, all of a sudden in the letter, but that, that's the background and the reason for that being uh, communicated to you. So we did talk about that in the Finance Committee earlier. So again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, your finance team, again, did a great job providing what was needed. <clears throat> and I'd like to also say it's very commendable uh, for an organization of your size to not have any audit adjustments, for us not to have to propose any significant adjustments to your financial statements so that your team is also to be committed for that. And I would be happy to answer any questions you may have from your review of the audit. Do you, uh, any council have any questions for the audit? Well, thank you very much. We appreciate all your efforts, too, in, in making sure we stay on the right track. So, again, at this time, uh, with no questions, um, I entertain a motion on that item. Mayor, I move that we approve as presented. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. It's unanimous. Item number eight, consider an act on the ordinance authorizing the issuance of the sale of City of Corinth, Texas, combination tax and limited surplus revenue certificates of obligation, series 2023, levying an annual ad lorem tax and providing for the security for the payment of said certificate certificates, approving the official statements, providing an effective date, and enacting other provisions related to the subject. Mr. Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this item is directly related to an action item you took, I think, back in January uh, for an intent to sell resolution. This is our debt sale associated with the CIP programming that we discussed back in December and January. Uh, this is specifically related to the Walton Drive reconstruction project, utility relocation associated with the um, overpass the TxDOT project at Lake Sharon and Dobbs, uh, and, I'm, and also uh, drainage along Shady Shores. Uh, and we discussed those a couple months ago. Can ask any specific questions you have. Our financial advisor, Marty Shue, is here tonight to answer any questions and present the information on the actual sale. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Marty Shu with Hilltop Securities. We represent the city as your financial advisor. Pleasure to be here this evening to represent the city and present these results to you. We have prepared these sale booklets for you. 
your bonds were sold through a competitive sale this morning. And what that means is essentially they were put out onto the open market and any and all underwriters were invited to submit a bid for the right to purchase and sell your bonds out to the public. I am very pleased to report that at, right after the first front cover, we have a list of all the bids that you received. The city did receive seven different proposals and BOK Financial came in with the lowest proposed true interest cost or TIC of a 3.67%. This is an excellent rate. Behind tab one, we have kind of graphed it for you to show you where you are in relation to the current market. Um, we have graphed your rate, or we've taken your rate and graphed it against the bond buyer's index. It is a third party index that is used to track municipal market conditions over time. They release a weekly rate, and the current weekly rate is a 3.73%. So as you can see, your bonds came in below that with the 3.67. And just as a sidebar, I have only seen this happen about two times in the last year because we've had so much volatility in our market and rates have been all over the place. Um, behind tab two, we've included a full set of the numbers for you so you can see what that interest rate translates to in dollars. The bonds are being sized to produce $11.5 million to uh, your construction fund and they're being um, sized over a 20 year period with equal annual payments and a very large part or reason for the favorable result is directly attributable to the high credit ratings of the city. So as part of the normal bond issuance process, the city had to apply for and purchase a bond rating. So city staff had to meet with the rating agencies, answer a lot of questions, provide a lot of information so that they could conduct a full credit assessment on the city. So there were two ratings apply for, one by S&P Global and the other by Moody's. I am also very excited to be here to report the really good news because S&P Global actually upgraded the city to a double A plus rating. I think it's very significant to note that that is only one notch away from a perfect score. So congratulations, you are in a very elite category of ratings. And then Moody's did also affirm the double A2 rating, they have you one notch below S&P. So on their scale, again, you're only two notches away from a perfect score. Um, this is very significant. The credit ratings of the city are just like you or I, our own personal credit ratings. So the higher your credit rating is, the lower the cost of borrowing when you go to apply for a car, purchase a mortgage. Same holds true for the city. So the higher your credit ratings, the lower the cost of the borrowing when you go to sell bonds. They do release uh, full write-ups or rating reports, which we've included for you behind the last tab. So I encourage you to read those. They do focus in on the strong financial performance, flexibility, and strong management of the city. So all in all, we think this is great news. This is the final step of the bond issuance process. So by adopting the ordinance tonight, you are effectively accepting this rate and locking these terms into place, and you'll receive the funds on April 13th. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from council? Well, this is great news, especially in today's market. So thank you very much. We appreciate your presentation. And at this time, I'd entertain a motion on this item. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve. All second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign? It's unanimous. Thank you. Well, Leanne, you got some more money to spend. <laughs> okay, council comments and future agenda items. The purpose of this section is to allow each council member the opportunity to provide general updates <clears throat> and or comments to fellow council members, the public, and our staff on any issues or future events. Also in accordance with section 30.085 of the Code of Ordinances, at this time, any council member may direct that an item be added as a business item to any future agenda. Mr. Garber. I don't have anything to add. I definitely had um, two comments and compliments. The first is to our finance staff. Um, you guys did an excellent job on that audit. 
and wanted to make sure that that you heard that from from the dais and feel feel free to go it's on video recording so you can <laughs> you can plaster my face on your computer um, as somebody that grew up in corporate compliance and spent a lot large part of my time in in those compliance efforts that all elusive perfect audit score uh, is difficult to come by um, and would like to point out for everybody that it's not just something that you can cram for you can't take a mess and turn it into a perfect score even in six months uh, these have to be you have to live those policies and you have to live excellence for those things to ferret out through an audit process and would also like to point out and commend uh, staff that I think we've in the eight years that I've been here this is our second or third improvement on the uh, the bond rating um, and we're told that at that time that a double A plus is going to be difficult for a city our size to obtain and certainly a triple A is probably out of the question because we're not handling the dollars uh, that some of those other cities are uh, but here we are we're eight years in we've seen two or three increases in that bond rating and again I want to tell everybody how Im impressive it is that on one night we heard about a bond rating increase a perfect audit score with staff um, and just wanted to tell everybody how much I appreciate them for that that's that's quite an achievement so thank you mr. Holdsworth well that's a tough act to follow but I, I'm a Scott I'm not a compliance guy at all in fact my, my wife is my banker money and she tells me that I'm a rule breaker so I can appreciate both sides of the coin, but I, it is tremendous of uh, the job that you folks do and the rating that we have. And I, I'm so honored to be a, a, a part of this group and play just a small role. Thank you for all you do. You too, Leanne, and your group. Mrs. Pickens. I, I'm always the last one, so I always feel like I'm repeating what everybody else said. <laughs> but I, I agree. Y'all make this city run like a fine old machine and it's because of what y'all do behind the scenes and your attention to detail and uh, the way you carry yourselves I couldn't be more proud um, to sit up here as a representative of this great city y'all make us look good Mr. Campbell I'd echo all that I can't top that well and congratulations to the council y'all a big part obviously your leadership and your stewardship of the budget is a big part of what happened tonight as well. So thank you all. Well, now you know why it's fun to be uh, involved in the city uh, business every, every day, every week, every month. And that is because it's our goal to get these kind of uh, recognitions. And we know we can't get those kind of recognitions without the people. And, and we're blessed in the city of Corinth with the staff. Uh, you're so diligent in everything that you do. Uh, you're unselfish in how you, uh, help each other and and when there's a real crisis it's really uh, fun to watch how you all get together as a team and and you all work together to get the results that we need and uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, able to call you our staff and and it's uh, you you represent us very well so thanks again for all that you do and I have one other thing uh, I don't know if you um, are aware of it walk for the red um, I was at uh, the fire station this morning um, I was not really fully aware of what that was until they called me to, to, to make a little speech this morning, and so I had to do some quick research on it. But what it's about is the fact that the, the, most, <clears throat> the highest uh, incident for death in the, in the fire department is uh, cancer. That's the number one killer of the fire de uh, firemen in, in the fire department. And what's happened is there's been some local firemen that have died from cancer. And, and this started in Michigan with the gentleman up there that uh, his captain uh, died from cancer. And so he started this uh, walk for red. Uh, we walk for the red. And, and what he does is he raises money through this uh, charity. And what he does is he gives it to the survivors of the, um, of the, the, the widows uh, of the firefighters. And I had the pleasure this morning to go over there 
it's quite emotional for me because cancer was, it set me. And um, it, what, was one, what was really nice to see is how they recognize the widows. And they give them a plaque and a rose. And, um, and they're going to be walking 100 miles between now, today was the first day, and it's going to end on Saturday. And what you can do is they have a route, and anybody can walk with these firemen. And they're going to have from different fire departments around North Texas, and, and they might even have a fire truck or an ambulance uh, there with them. But they walk, and they're trying to get those miles. So if you have any children that are on spring break and want to get, some, get them out and get them some exercise, might be a good thing for them to do. And it's a nice story that the people are so so appreciative of what, what we do. But I just thought I'd share that with you today uh, because it, it, it's kind of close to my heart because it deals with cancer. So with that, we're adjourned.